let me explain how I choose where to start a freehand drawing. And not just explain, but I'll demonstrate with a number of drawings from relatively simple to really quite complex. Choosing the right starting point is vital if I'm to have every chance of a successful freehand drawing. Before we start looking at some time lapses of drawings, I just want to outline the five main principles I use in working out where to start and then how to progress from there. This is my drawing of that reference. The first and very important principle is I look at my reference and I work out where's a section that I can draw very accurately, very easily, because I will then use it as a reference, like a ruler for the rest of my drawing. And it will also be the first thing I use for alignment of other parts of the drawing. So in this reference, this section here, particularly this rectangular column here, rectangles are quite good starting points because we can see the proportions and the angles quite easily. My second principle is draw more detailed areas before less detailed areas, which generally means closer areas before further away areas. And that's partly because of the way I draw, where as objects move further away, I draw them with a lighter touch and less detail. Now I can't know what less detail is actually going to look like until I've drawn more detail. So I start with this section and then I move across. My third point is to use vertical and horizontal alignment with what I've already drawn. For instance, when I'm drawing this building here, I'll be looking across to here and seeing what's the horizontal point of this balcony. It should be fairly close. To this point here. This black wrought iron balcony corner here should be level with about here and it may or may not be but it gives me an idea of if my alignment's not right if I'm drawing these parts too large or too small. My fourth principle is that nothing is more important with buildings of architecture in most cases than getting the perspective angles correct because if they're not correct all the detail that we've drawn will just be in most cases helping to highlight that the perspective angles look awkward. Now in this scene they're not so complex, they're not too extreme. It's just really this building which is on the curve and therefore these perspective angles don't line up with these ones. And I have a video on perspective going round corners. And my fifth point is to draw things in front before things behind. So let's talk through an actual drawing now. This is our reference for a drawing of the Marienkirche in Berlin. This is how our relatively simple drawing finished up, but I'll talk through a quick time lapse to show me applying most of those principles. I use this beige section of the tower as my reference point, as my ruler. It's a relatively simple rectangle to draw, and then there's almost no perspective, just a very small angled perspective off to the right hand side of the tower. Using the proportions of what I've drawn at the tower, I draw the copper bell tower section on top and I take care with these details because it's probably the focal point of the drawing and then the roofing spire part also in this wonderful weathered copper. I work the proportions of the roof by using the height of the tower as a reference. I also carefully place these four roof vents along the edge of the roof because they will be used to align the windows underneath. You can see me put the closer details of the lampposts in place before I do the trees behind them and then before I do the windows in fact behind the trees. It's keeping the order so that I can keep my line work uncluttered and I'm not trying to draw things over the top of other things. It becomes a lot more straightforward now that I've got the more cluttered foreground. I've got the entire width of my church drawing to use to align where things should line up, which means I've just got the horizontal proportions to work out in terms of where the lines go. This is also the stage of the drawing where we work out, do we want to simplify foreground clutter? And here's our church. I don't have any video of the drawing of this rooftop detail of the Hotel de Ville in Paris, but it's a good example of a drawing where I started at the top and I worked down. Because there is so much ornamentation, both in the detail and in the larger structural elements with all these turrets and mansard roofs, it just seemed too difficult to establish any reference point down here. 
Whereas I could draw the very top part of the main tower and then the left hand side of it quite easily and then use this as my reference point, which I found worked quite well for this quick freehand sketch. In this aerial view of a Shropshire village, I actually started down in this lower left corner because these are the closest buildings to us. It was important to establish the level of my line work and detail before we got into the considerably further away buildings because drawing with a lighter touch and with a narrower pen would be part of the way I would create this effect of landscape going off into the distance. The other thing that's a bit different about this scene in working out how I'm going to draw it is I paid a special attention to this zigzag effect here because these were going to be a focal point of the line work and the lighter touch with the line work and the details is not just in the buildings but it's actually particularly in the trees if we compare the trees in this foreground section to the ones much further in the background. Let's go. So I start in the lower left and it's this top ridge line of the roofs which really is the line I'm trying to get right rather than the actual detail because these roofs provide the visual separation from the line work to do with the trees and the, the paths and the hedges. So I want them to stand out and I want the angles to be correct. If the angles aren't right, the sense of distance won't be there. It'll look like we're more overhead looking down if I make the angles too steep. I rapidly lighten my line work and my detail as I follow this row of houses up to the center left. And then once I've finished that, I do some of the, the foliage, but then I want to get this row of houses off to the right. And to get that, those little bare rectangular shapes, that will help just create some separation and visually say it's a, it's a village. From this point, there really is not that much to draw. The important thing is to keep that light touch. I'm using a finer pen and really doing the minimal lines I can to suggest the detail. And by the time we get to the far distance, the pale blue section in the reference, I'm just drawing a few horizontal lines. In some ways, this is a relatively simple drawing if we get the beginning accurately done. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. If you've made it this far, why not hit subscribe if you haven't already, hit notifications so you know when I post new videos, and have a look at the other titles that are available on my channel. If you love drawing architecture and streetscapes, there should be a wealth of inspiration and teaching for you here. In this view of a Yorkshire coastal town, I decide to start with this chimney because it gives me a rectangular box shape here to work with. The challenge in this scene is that buildings are a jumble of angles and so we end up with lots of parallelogram type shapes. Getting these shapes to look correct will be the way I know that as I draw this out from this center point, I'm being accurate in my proportions. Now I don't want to draw these crowds down here. This is how it turned out. But let's have a look at the process. We start with the chimney in the central location, which will let me go out in all directions. I try and draw this little rectangular box on top as accurately as I can. Now, because of all the different perspective angles, this scene is a jumble of parallelograms or triangles sloping to one side. It's important for me just to look at these shapes individually and try and draw them as accurately as I can and not be thinking of them as being parts of buildings because that will just distract me and possibly have me draw how I think they might look rather than what I'm actually seeing. I move out to the left and to the right of the chimney and that then gives me a platform that I can use to reference going upwards for these very important buildings in the top center. Once I'm happy with the shapes of the walls and think that they capture the perspective angles correctly, then I can add some interest by suggesting some stonework and some tiling or tin on the roof. I move out a bit more to the right here so that then when I come down to the front, I've got all the reference points I need to work out exactly how large to draw this protruding room that comes off in the lower section and how far to bring this sloping roof out so that the proportions are all correct. It really is looking back and forth, back and forth at the reference all the time and then checking alignments with what I've already drawn. What is above the corner of this roof? So I do these last buildings off to the right and then 
I get to do some different texture line work with the leaves in this view of the National Gallery of Germany in Berlin. I wanted to draw this whole scene pretty much as is. So I decided this front facade of the gallery up high on this pedestal was the best section to start with. But the problem was it was partly obscured and I needed to get these perspective angles correct. Here's how it finished up. Let me talk you through the process. So I start with the colonnade that this rectangular face will be my reference shape. I can't draw it all in exactly because the tree is going to obscure some of it, but I still work at getting the angles correct. The lower part of the facade, I can't draw it properly in either because there's a large equestrian statue in front of it that I'm just drawing now. But I do want to establish the outline of this as much as I can because I will use this box as my reference, particularly for the details lower down, to work out exactly where they should align. It's unusual that the main subject will not be the most detailed because it is sitting further back. It's framed by a lot of objects that are a lot closer. So I do need to keep a light touch. And so you can see as I draw these figures in the front, I draw them with a heavier line, with a heavier touch, with more detail, with darker hatching, all of which to help them come forward, come closer, and therefore let the building sit back. Despite the reasonable amount of detail, I draw on it. I still want it to look like we're looking through this framing view of trees and shadow in the front at the gallery sitting in the sun behind. But once I've got the alignment correct and the proportions correct, I can have fun just doing the hatching and adjusting the overall tonal effect of the hatching so that the darker areas are darker and the areas I want to sit back aren't as dark, as well as increasing the dark on the people in the front. And yeah, I'm really quite happy with this drawing as it turns out, although it was a fairly complex one to plot and to plan. This last example I feel is probably the most complex drawing I've done freehand. Again, I use my principle of where is the simplest spot to draw accurately? And I decided that this section of the facade was because I'm looking straight on and then from this I can work at getting the perspective angles correct. The perspective angles are going to be very important in this drawing because they're such a dominant part of the visual effect. And yet with these multiple bow windows and curved towers are certainly going to complicate drawing that line. Because the ground slopes downwards here, that's a further complication and it's going to be very important to be checking my alignment as I draw. And this section of the building is significantly closer than this section. So I'm going to have to be conscious of lightening my touch and reducing the detail with which I draw the different architectural elements as I move down the street. There are some even some people and cars at street level and this post here and street light here that I'm going to have to leave room for as I draw. So this really pulls together all my strategies for drawing and here's how it's turned out. Let's see how the process goes in action. So then I do start with these relatively straightforward front on viewed stories in this front corner and I put extra effort into getting those proportions as accurate as I can because I'm going to be using these to measure in straight lines on each side to check proportions and angles and alignments. I also work very hard with these perspective lines. It's hard to draw perspective lines when you can't draw the line right the way down the street. You notice I drew that lamppost in before I then drew the building around it so that my lines stop just before and give a little sense of separation between the pole in front and the building behind. There is quite a complicated roof line as well with this building, which makes it very important that I get all of those elements in the right place because they are repeated, so they are meant to be symmetrical. So I do want to make sure that they have a symmetrical feel about them. All the time, checking back my perspective line. I don't check the perspective line with the part I've just drawn. I always take it back to where it starts so that if I've made a slight 
mistake up or down as I've drawn it, I can correct it in the section that I'm drawing at that point. Then I have these street level details that I need to draw because they're closer before I can draw the bottom section of the building. Now I'm getting some distance down the street, I switch to a finer pen and I'm drawing these with a lighter touch. By now I've drawn most things once already so it's becoming a little easier and with this dome topped tower I've reached halfway but with the foreshortening of course I'm much more than halfway across my paper. And now I start to do some of the details at the end of the street as I finish this building. But all the time I'm drawing lines back across to that first section I did to see where does this window line up with what I first drew. Is it lining up in my drawing? I draw the building across the end of the street on the other side and now I've got this left hand side. Now I switch back to a heavier pen and I need to draw a little more detail but it really is the support act this side and that's it.